Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to use a laser welder to build an actual fabrication project. I've been getting to know this process over the last uh, month or two and most of what I've done has been coupons on the bench, which is probably a lot of what you've seen. And the whole point behind having a machine like this is to actually build stuff. So we're going to see what that's like. Um, I'm going to be building a cart for the X Laser Lab X1 Pro that can fit the machine. The wire feeder has places for all the cables and uh, can roll around with my gas cylinder. So I'm really excited about it. Now I've made two videos with this machine already. One where I did a deep dive overview and another where I compared it with MIG and TIG welding. So if you want to learn more about the process in general, I'll have those linked in the description. Let's get started. One thing I've learned so far is that fit up is really important. So I'm using the evolution saw, which helps me to get a really nice clean fit up on my parts. And I'm just welding some 16 gauge square tubing and I'll have a couple rectangles for the upper and lower tiers. Now the fit up you can see is really good. And so it's gonna be ideal for laser welding. And as I get started, one of the challenges um, that I've found running a butt joint like this, like you have on the side of the tubing, is just tracking with it because it looks really different than it does when you're MIG or TIG welding. See, when you're MIG or TIG welding, you have a clear view of the weld puddle, but with laser, it's more of a macro big picture view, and so you need to get set up right, and you don't have that fillet to really guide your wire. And I found that a good uh, measure of how well I hit the joint is the heat tint. Is it balanced? Do I see some on both sides? Right there, I think I'm biased a little bit to one side. And so that can help me, you know, just get better at learning. And with every joint, I did get a little bit better. And so, you know, there's definitely some, some amount of learning in how to set up for it. But right there, you can see it's balanced pretty good. And I was able to wrap over the start and end of the weld. And that's another challenge with this um, that I'm still learning is how to tie those welds in at the end. Now, I didn't tack anything together, which I normally would have tacked this really well, but I just ran the welds and flipped it right over without grinding because those welds are so small. If I'd MIG welded this, I definitely would have ground it, but uh, it, it's sitting really flat and the fit up's still really good on the other side. So that's a big time savings there. And maybe I wouldn't have needed to do that with MIG. It's just been uh, how I've operated, but uh, here, I'll just uh, finish this out and I'm noticing that the power is dropping off on the laser welder and notice how it's just sitting on top. Now that happened twice in this project and what uh, it was is the actual uh, protective lens and I think if I get my angle wrong and I shoot straight into something it'll reflect back and burn that protective lens. Now I found some on Amazon that I'm going to give a try to um, but they have them available also. Uh, to just stock up. It did come with some extras, so I'm still good to go for the rest of this project, just with what was included. And I think if I handle the gun right, it can go a really long time without that happening. Now, when I uh, run these inside fillet welds, it's nice that this is a project where I can rearrange things. And those little fillet welds are just ideal for this machine, especially on the 16 gauge tubing. It's a perfect size, no spatter, no, you know, post-processing required at all and that's a great finish now for the outside corners i was going to try to run them autogenous with this uh, nozzle right here but i realized really quickly that with those mitered corners there's not a whole lot of material left and so that's just really not going to work and i need to feed some wire so my options are to use the other nozzle that i was before which i think would have worked fine or you can use this nozzle that has guides for an outside corner and also a guide for the wire feed. And that worked really well. So I ended up going with that for all the outside corners. I think next time I'd probably just leave the setup alone and use the same one. But you can see here I started a little bit uh, late there. So that's one of the challenges. Now I need to install some cross members into both of these upper tiers to, uh, or into the lower and upper tier to retain the gas cylinder and create a handle. And this is really easy when you have those uh, little grooves in the side for it to track. It's almost like a flare bevel groove weld if you're familiar with that. And then on the side you have the little fillet weld um, on the T-joint and that worked out really well. 
Now I did decide to grind these flat just a little bit before I put some tubing on, but it took a lot less time than it would with a MIG weld because there just wasn't much there. And I am set to go ahead and install these uprights to connect the lower and upper tiers. And at this point, I'm moving pretty quick with it and the productivity is really high. So I, I like it. I like it really well. Now, after welding three sides, I might have to remove part of the fixture to get to this outside uh, there. I needed to remove the square to weld the inside and everything stayed nice and true. You'll see in a minute when I go to join the upper and lower tiers together that uh, it's pretty much a perfect fit. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of wrestling around with this sort of thing if you don't build like a, a larger fixture, which it wouldn't make sense to do for a small project like this. Um, but it really just set right on there, which is nice. And so I think there is a little bit less distortion than you get with some other uh, processes, but there still was some welding distortion. I think the biggest limitation is really the ergonomics of the gun. See, I'm having to do a little bit of thinking about how to line up. And fortunately, this project, I can roll around and move into different positions. But if I were working on something that I couldn't, it would be pretty challenging in some cases to figure out what direction I want to point that gun because there are some reflections and there's some stray light that can come off the end. So I never want it facing me. And you always have it in a drag angle, and so you've really got to think really carefully about that, and, and especially about safety with that stray laser light. Also, by the way, this is a different welding helmet than a standard one. You need a special uh, welding helmet or glasses when you're working with lasers. Now, I have a really good fit up on these cross members. I always measure these after the fact in case it's up or down by a 16th or a 32nd of an inch to get it to fit. But uh, this is a cross member just for a center shelf that's actually going to hold the machine and the wire feeder will be on the top tier. Notice I rolled it around again to access the top of that joint and if it were in a position I couldn't move it, I think TIG welding would be a little bit easier to manipulate around. But in this case, it's really nice. My design has several little detail uh, sheet metal parts and I wanted them cut nicely so I ordered laser cut parts from Send Cut Send and they showed up in just about a week. And this is a really good way to get uh, these types of parts. They have sponsored several videos on the channel. This isn't the sponsored video by them, but um, you can find a discount code in the description that'll save you a little bit if you need those kind of parts. So these are cylinder mounts and that circle and slot will hold some chain to retain the cylinder and they're sized to be able to fit anywhere from an 80 cubic foot clear up to a 300 cubic foot cylinder. Because I want to be able to put any size cylinder uh, on the same cart. Now these fillet welds are ideal for laser welding and I think while the tube project is going well, um, small sheet metal projects or even large ones that have laser cut parts, maybe tab and slot design are really an ideal fit. Just look how clean that is when you make those types of welds. Now to add a little bit more rigidity and strength, I'm going to run an intermittent weld on the other side also that's actually offset from that first one. And this lays in really easily so I can put a really long weld in there. The fillet welds are relatively small, but it's just attached to 16 gauge square tubing anyway, so you're not going to exceed the strength of that wall. And if you watch some of the other videos that I've made with this machine and uh, tested the weld strength, I mean, I, I have a lot of confidence in the strength of these welds on this lighter gauge stuff. I mean, it just uh, penetrates in really well and is a really, uh, really robust, reliable process. So I've been pretty impressed so far, but I am new at it. So I am still learning exactly how to handle this thing and be the most productive that I can. Now, this little shelf is for a uh, welding gun holder that I drew up and uh, I decided to run this, you know, just a full length fillet because I thought that would look nice on there. And it turned out great. Pretty fast to do. I built this little fixture to build my hooks, which are just a little piece of square tubing along with a rectangular plate. And I found that I get bound up if I tried to wrap all the way around the corner there. So I did just touch the corner a little bit, but uh, I am able to wrap corners. You have to move pretty quick to do it with that long gun. And that worked out really well. And you can get just a beautiful weld there. But you can also make one that's pretty ugly. So I had a, a stinker or two, but for the most part, the welds came out pretty nice. Now I'm going to attach those to the side of the cart and I'll have three on one side and two on the other, which should be enough for every accessory that this machine has. 
And then I can just run some welds along the top and little fillets on the inside and those will be good to go. Most of these welds turned out really good on the hooks, but it is possible to get one that looks pretty bad. And what happened here is I just wasn't lined up right and uh, in a comfortable position. And so, you know, you end up pointing the wrong direction, not moving like you need to. So you got to look out for that. There is some skill involved. So I had the holes tapped on these caster plates. And just a little tip for you, if you decide to do something like this, you need to drill out behind those. So I'll throw a little bit of sauce on there. And that always just helps everything to go a little bit better while I drill it and then use a step drill and that's nice because it'll deburr my hole and I'm ready to weld these on. And I have a little, uh, almost like a flare bevel groove weld there that I can track along with and my wire will just sit right in that uh, edge between the two and I'll weld these on all the way along both sides and then put a fillet weld on the inside also to hold them really well. Now see how that wire got stuck? Every now and again, if I don't handle the gun just right at the end, it'll get stuck. It's kind of a nuisance. Now I'm using the cutting feature here, and I've switched over all of the welding I'm doing with Argon because that's what I have. Um, but I've switched over to high pressure compressed air, about 90 PSI, and that's working really well to cut this. Now it's a little bit of a different feel than a plasma cutter or a cutting torch that I'm used to, and so I'm just kind of getting the hang of it here, but uh, it, it is working really well and it cuts right through. So that's nice, but you got to be pretty careful with what's on the backside because that beam is shooting out, uh, out past it much more than you'd have with a plasma cutter or something like that. So uh, proceed with caution on that. I did find it a little bit more challenging to read the cut speed. You can see I get some sparks bouncing up if I go too fast. Um, but I'm not able to watch underneath to see the angle that they're coming down from, so it's a little harder to tell. But uh, once you get the hang of it, it works pretty good. And that kerf, look how small that is. That's a, a pretty unique setup there to have just that tiny little kerf when I'm cutting some pieces. These are just some notches to be able to clear that tubing on the lower and middle tiers. Now, when it uh, comes to cleanup, there is a little bit of dross or burr on here. But uh, it doesn't take too much to, to clean up. That's all it took to knock all of it off that edge. And you can see how nice the little welds are. I just put some intermittent welds around to hold it on, and there's basically no cleanup at all. Now for the axle, if I were MIG welding it, I'd just put a big old fat weld right in there on the bottom and call it a day. But since I knew I was going to laser weld this, I designed some little plates for the side. So you can design your project around the process you're going to use. And I got some nice little fillet welds on the inside and also on the outside. And it gives a good clean look. And I just have some holes drilled in it to use cotter pins to retain it. We'll put that on in a minute. Now I threw some paint on there and I'm just going to torque these front wheels to spec and add that cotter pin on the back. Now I went with some larger casters and wheels. I've never wished I had a smaller wheel in a cart, that's for sure. Now here's the finished product before I loaded it up with the machine. I wanted somewhere to store my gun, so I designed this cradle that I could uh, remove and put on the cart. I just put some cup magnets here on the bottom so I can set it on my welding table or even on a project and then add it uh, on the welding cart to hold the gun while I'm uh, storing it. This also leaves a little extra room for that fiber optic cable. Now I have dual chains to hold the uh, gas cylinder in place so it can't tip over on me. And then on the other side I have a hook for the wire feeder, the work clamp, the e-stop button, and all of those accessories that I might need. And so this puts the whole thing in an all-in-one package that I can roll around and actually use. So uh, it's a pretty cool project. Well, the cart turned out great, but that isn't the point of the video. I'm really trying to get a feel for what it's like using a laser welder for an actual fabrication project. And I will say it's a little bit more challenging than it is to run coupons on the bench, right? When you go to trade shows and they have these demos set up and it's all dialed in and it just stitch, 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 stitch right along a joint, uh, that's one thing, but when you're working in different welding positions, different types of joints, imperfect fit up, it can be a little bit more challenging. And by the end of the project, I had a pretty good feel for how to hold the gun, how to get set up, um, how much pressure to apply on the wire to get it to feed right and those sorts of things. 
and they were turning out consistently really good. So if I were to build another one of these carts and I had my option of processes, I'd reach for the laser pretty much every time if I could. So um, definitely gonna be a useful tool in the shop. If you wanna check out one of these X Laser Labs X1 Pro uh, machines, I have a link in the description. It's an affiliate link that does help support the channel and uh, be sure to check there for any current discount codes as well. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions in the comments or uh, any thoughts on this video. And if you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.